Jesus was the only one and is the only one that can reveal God's character. Look, nobody else can do it. And now your host, Pastor Robert Scales. Welcome again to Jesus is the Mission Podcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. I tell you, saints, we, we, we've got to learn and get more revelation about Jesus. So we can believe in him more. And Jesus, you know, this was his greatest message was believe in him. And really believe is to trust, rely, depend on him. And so uh, many times we we we're not doing that as we should. In John chapter three, verse 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, this word believe means to trust, to rely on, to cleave to Jesus. I like the Amplified Bible uh, in John 3. Uh, it says, for God so loved the world, he so greatly loved and dearly prized the world, that he even gave up his only begotten unique son, so that whoever believes, trusts in, clings to, relies on him. See, what a difference that is in just saying you believe. Shall not perish, come to destruction, be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. So, you know, believing in Jesus is more than you just going to heaven. And thank God we have that assurance. But believing in Jesus should be your trust and reliance on the life that was in him. And many times, if you don't know that you have this eternal life, you're not going to walk in it. You're going to stay in your physical senses. You're going to stay in how you feel and what you think and what it looked like to you. And when you really believe in Jesus, you believe in Jesus taught this. Jesus said this. Jesus did this. See? And and Jesus said, you, you won't perish. You won't come to destruction. You won't be lost. He's talking about coming to destruction in your life. Because he did. And when you trust in Jesus, he'll produce the same life that was in him living in you. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus might be saved. Now, look, look, look what he said there. That the world through Jesus might be saved. So, your life got to learn how to live in Jesus. Now, hold your spot there in John 3. Look in Colossians 2, verse 6. As you have received, and therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. And one of the things that I believe Christians got to gotta be taught week after week after week, is how to live in him. Now, if you don't change your thinking and renew it to Jesus, have the man of Christ, you will always talk about what you doing and not what Jesus has been doing through you, in you, by you. And so the Bible said in Colossians 3, 2, 7, Rooted and built up in him. Establishing the faith. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now, what are you going to be established in? In how Jesus loves you? Who Jesus is? What Jesus did? You're going to be established in how Jesus walked in victory. Spoke to the wind it obeyed. Overcame the world. Tempting in every point, yet without sin. So you're going to be established that the devil shot every arrow 
at Jesus. And that's when you will know that when you have the, 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 the spirit of faith, the shield of faith, you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith is the shield of you believing and trusting in Jesus. He, he defeated all the works of the devil. He made a show of them opening, triumphing over them. Colossians 2.15. Spoil them. And so when you when you 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 to be established in this, your faith in Jesus. This is believing God when you trust in his son. Now, so God did not send Jesus to the world to condemn the world or sentence us. So you have to have confidence that Jesus is not sentencing you for nothing that you do. Now, he could tell you what you're going to get, but he's not sentencing you. God didn't send Jesus to condemn the world, lock you up in what you and I have done wrong. But that the world through Jesus, see, where, where are we going to be living? Through him. Well, if you live through Jesus, you can't be condemned because ain't no condemnation in Jesus. Now, when you're living in you, man, you could just be beat all up by stuff. And most Christians don't even understand that they are not living in Jesus. They just got a lot of knowledge about Jesus. Maybe grew up in a home where they talked about Jesus, but that don't mean you walking in no relationship with Jesus because your parents are. You have to develop a relationship with Jesus where you do everything he tell you. You seek to hear his voice and a stranger you will not follow. You acknowledge Jesus' lordship over you. It's an honor for you to serve Jesus and to please him. And, and the Bible said in Romans, Romans, uh, chapter 8, verse 1. Now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, now I want you to see something there. In Christ Jesus. Now, I could teach this from many different aspects and ways, but... Let me just break down a few to you. When you're in Jesus, you're not in you. When you're in Jesus, you're in his love, his truth, his life, his ways, the, the, the very life that God is. So there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus now. Listen to what can deceive you. You can accept Jesus and be born again and not live in Jesus. Not be in Jesus. Not live in your life through him. And so condemnation, guilt, shame, being inferior. Um, these things can, can come and, and, and overtake you in your flesh and your soul. But but then they added in here who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who walk not after. So, so even though you say you believe in Jesus, you still could be walking after the flesh and, and, and being condemned and beat up about stuff. And the reason is, here we go back, we go back. Uh, you're not believing and trusting and relying on who Jesus is. He stands on the right hand side of God in the greatest honor. You, you, you're supposed to be believing you're in him. You, you can't believe properly that you're in him if you're not serving him right. Look here, verse uh, Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life, in Christ Jesus 
has made me free from the law of sin and death. So you can see here, you have to believe this. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. See, the law was weak through the flesh. God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. And see, we've got to learn to live in Jesus so sin is condemned in our flesh. What do you mean condemned in our flesh? It's, it's locked up where it can't get out. Well, what do you mean, Pastor Scales? Can't get out. It can't work no more. What I, 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 I won't use and drink. All that stuff's still in your flesh. Your flesh didn't get redeemed and born again. And sometimes I think it bothers people that that stuff is still in your flesh. Sometimes it takes years to get that stuff out of your thinking. Where your flesh don't even get to talk no more because your mind's been renewed. And I think sometimes when people's flesh talk to them, they think that's how they really are. When you, That's not how you really are. You have to start not paying attention to that and live in your believing, trusting in who Jesus is. What Jesus did. See? And, and, and we got to learn that, that, we, that sin is condemned in the flesh. Now, let's, let me give you another scripture to go with that. Galatians 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Walk in believing in Jesus, trusting in Jesus. Walk in relying on Jesus. That, that's the only way you're going to walk in the spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Did you ever notice he never said walk in the spirit and you won't never have to deal with the lust of the flesh? He said you won't fulfill it. You won't fulfill it. So you have to learn, saints, that it's not, it's not bad that something's wrong in your flesh. All, all God's telling us is trust Jesus. Well, what's in the flesh don't rule us. See? And 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 and, and a lot of times. Uh, uh, if my flesh, I said, shut up in Jesus' name. See? I cast down those thoughts that the flesh or the devil brings. And that's why you want to start your Christian walk being honest and sincere so that you, you can tell God everything. Your stinking flesh will lie. It'll cover up. It'll make an excuse for you not to do what God said. Even as a little child, that flesh will just lie so that they don't get in trouble. That's your flesh. If you walk in God's love, knowing that God loves you, you don't have to cover nothing up. Because God, listen, saints, listen to this. God already knows you done messed up. Come on. He, he already knows. Why would you hide it from him? And he already knows. And so and so many times people don't understand that your flesh ain't saved. And you don't have to fulfill. What it tell you? And if you stay with the word long enough and stay with Jesus long enough, that, 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 that old man will die. And you won't even hear those thoughts anymore. I, I, I got thoughts to smoke cigarettes for 30 days. I never got another thought to do that again. I got thoughts to use drugs for nine months. I never got another thought to do that. Well, what happened to it? It's condemned. The devil, my mind is renewed. It's nothing the devil can even bring up no more. 
It's nothing my flesh can bring up no more. And because I'm living in, in faith in Jesus. Now let's go back to John 3. In verse 18, Jesus said, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Anytime you, you find people struggling with what they did, what they doing, they afraid to tell somebody. I'll show you a person who don't trust that Jesus loves them. They are say they do, but there's no action of fruit when storms come that the Lord loved them. I remember when the first few years I was saved, I got condemned a lot. And what I did, Jesus taught me to do this, was that right in the midst of feeling just horrible, like you just done let God down, you done tore Jesus up, done messed him all to pieces. I, I'd, I'd sit there and say, no, Jesus still loves me. He still cares about me. He wouldn't have saved me and delivered me like that. And then he just going to throw me away now. And that would that would deliver me from that guilt and condemnation. Till that guilt and condemnation couldn't even come back and talk to me no more. And Christians, we, we've got to teach people how to grow in this. That your flesh is lazy. Your flesh will dominate you. Because you ain't developed your faith in Jesus. Man, if you ain't careful, your flesh won't even want to hear the Bible no more. Won't want to read. Don't want to pray. You didn't want to watch TV and sleep. That's all. It don't get no excitement about God, Jesus, Holy Ghost. Man, it'll, it'll just put on that front and pretend when you really are not hooked up with the Holy Ghost, the joy. You might have used to really be tapped in it and you wonder where is that at now? Why I ain't like that? Because you don't start letting your flesh root. Jesus said, he that believeth on him is not condemned. And, um, and, and this, this is very difficult for a lot of people. The reason that it wasn't difficult for me was I, I kept my faith in what Jesus did for me June 30th, 1988. Now, I know he died for me on the cross. But, but that love came in my spirit. Made me a new creature June 30th, 1988 in the Samaritan Drug Treatment Center on Sheriff Avenue off North 6. I always took my faith in Jesus back to there. That he loved me. That how could you come in my heart, deliver me from, from drug, alcohol, gambling, lust for women, robbing and stealing. And all the other sins I had. And then now, something go wrong in my life, and now you not you don't love me no more. I wouldn't accept that. I told that guilt and condemnation. I said you're not from God. That's not God doing that to me. Jesus loves me, and 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 and, and as I renewed my mind with that, and I kept releasing my faith in that, that stuff stopped. And ain't never been there since. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Now, let me let me show you a ditch that some people go in. They they do something wrong and don't even think they supposed to be sorry about it. Well, God already done forgave me. I had a preacher tell me I ain't got to repent. God done forgave me. God love me. Hold on now. God love the whole world, but they're going to go to hell if they don't accept the Lord Jesus. So even though God has provided forgiveness for us through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and thank God he did, 
it still has to be received. You still have to accept it. Or the Bible wouldn't have wrote, confess your sins, 1 John 1, 9. He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And I'm going to teach you on that tomorrow. Uh, uh, how Christians, born again believers, spirit-filled tongue talkers, really don't believe Jesus is faithful and just. Oh yeah, they'll lie and tell you they do. But catch them in something that's wrong. You will see they don't really believe it. See, it takes tests and trials to show up your faith. And they will show do you have it or not. Just get in a storm and you will find out do you really have faith and trust Jesus? You can say that all day. I, I trust the Lord. I love the Lord. I, okay. Now let somebody do something ugly to you. And then we'll see if you have faith in Jesus to forgive them and live in his love toward them. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not. Now get that. Is, is condemned already. So you can see from the scriptures and from Jesus' teachings that when you're getting condemned and guilty and beat up, it's because you are not trusting and relying on how he loved you on that cross. You, you, evidently, you don't come in this thing wrong. You, you ain't got born again wrong. You, you, you don't have a, a memory of what the Lord Jesus has done for you. That you believed on his name, you received it. You know you have eternal life and then you believe on his name to live everything Jesus tell you to do. Well, he that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. So if you're already condemned or something's making you guilty and feel real ugly, listen to the saints. If you don't resist that immediately, it's because you're not relying on Jesus. Amen. Let, let me read it to you in the Amplified Bible. He who believes in him, who clings to, trusts in, and relies on Jesus, is not judged. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. Did you get that? Oh, when you trust in Jesus, listen, you're not going to get judgment. You're going to get forgiveness. Why well, would some many preachers would hear that? For for him, there is no rejection, no condemnation. Did you get that? In Jesus, there's no rejection. He is not telling you, I ain't going to be there for you. Jesus is not telling you, I'm not going to still love you. He's going to still love you. No matter what we go through, no matter what we face, Jesus is not bringing you the guilt, the shame, the guilty feelings, the guilty verdict. He ain't bringing none of that to you. Why? He don't have none of that in him. So, whoever really believes in Jesus, there has to be action of Jesus' love working in your life. And he's not judged. He who trusts in Jesus never comes up for judgment. For him, there is no rejection, no condemnation. He incurs no damnation. But he who does not believe, cleave to, rely on, trust in him, is judged already. He has already been convicted and has already received his sentence. Because he has not believed in and trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God, 
He is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ's name. Did you get that? And 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 and, and you get people, they, they say, I trust, I believe in Jesus. But believing in Jesus is when you're trusting in him. And this is how you believe God. It's when you trust and rely in Jesus, who brings no rejection, no condemnation, and no guilt. Hallelujah. That's good news. That's good news. I want to make available to you this six CD series called I Believe God. On the screen is our address. We'll love you for $30 or more. And, and if you ask me, uh, I'll send you a free copy of my book, Knowing God the Right Way. Make your checks and money orders payable to Jesus' Answer Ministries, Post Office Box 292. Write this address down, saints. Post Office Box 292, 112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. Write that address down and you mail us. Write us in. I'll pay the postage and handling and I'll get this right out to you. And um, every, everywhere I've been this year, these CDs, uh, they, we've sold out of these quicker than any others. And so order them today. We'll get them right out to you. And I, I, I know that they'll bless your life. They'll enhance your walk with Jesus. Also, I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church. We meet in Watertown, Tennessee. On the screen is our service times. Saints, listen. If, you, if you've never been saved, you're not sure about your salvation, come. If you're bound on drugs, habits, hurting, been hurt, been through something or some trauma, some crisis, Jesus has to answer. If you're hungry for God, hungry for truth, hungry for the word, and Jesus has a church where you need to come. So I, I encourage you to come and call that number on the screen or go to our web page, robertscaleministry.org, you get directions to the church. Well, I want to thank my partners and friends for your financial support. And it's for my partners and friends that I, I'm on TV. And I thank you so much for taking time to write us. Let us know how the ministry has been a blessing to you, how the word of God has changed your life. Amen. It encourages me to hear that. Well, my time is up today. My prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes not and be filled with the fullness of God. From Jesus and some ministries, I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember, saints, Jesus gave us a new commandment as he loved us on the cross. Believe in that love and go give it to everybody. Have a blessed day today in Jesus. Stay in his love. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.